Hello everybody and welcome to episode 29. In this part we're just going to focus on drawing our player's health to the screen. We're just going to specifically focus on that, okay, just drawing these hearts um, in the top left uh, of our game screen. And we get, so if I come into here, they kind of, they, they follow us around independently. And, and that's it, okay? Actually taking damage, we'll come to in the next part. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is bring in the sprite that we're going to use. So I'm going to make a new sprite. I'm going to call it S Health. I'm going to click Import, and I'm going to bring in uh, S Health underscore Strip Five from my uh, Assets folder. But um, for those of you making your own assets, we'll just talk quickly about how this is laid out. It's very simple. We've got a full heart, okay, just a sim single heart icon. I've baked in a little drop shadow for this as well. And then the next frame is an empty heart, okay, so what it should look like when, you know, you, you, you know, like in Zelda, you've got a bunch of heart containers, and it, it shows us empty when we don't have that heart filled, okay? Um, and then the next few frames are filling the heart slowly one quarter at a time, up to three quarters, okay? And then we're obviously wrapping back around again, it's full. Okay, so it should be in that order, all right? So full heart, empty heart, and then filled all the way. Next up, we just need to assign our health to be something. Um, a lot of things in our game are probably going to want to interact with our player's health in different ways, be it when an enemy hits us or or whatever else. So I'm actually just going to make it a global. So I'm going to come to O game where we define most of our sort of global variables at the start here. And uh, just in just down here, I'm going to write uh, global dot player health uh, max equals three. All right, that's going to be our maximum health, which obviously, I don't know, you might be able to pick up heart containers or whatever, like in Zelda or something like that to be able to increase that max health. So we'll store that in a variable. Uh, global dot player health uh, is then going to equal whatever our max is. So global dot player health max. And just by assigning that at the start of the game, that's our default, you know, assuming we're starting a new game, we start ourselves at max uh, life. And then if we implement loading games later on, we'll be able to overwrite this value with whatever is in our saved game, for example, okay? And the next thing I'm going to do is make a new object uh, that we're going to use to actually draw the hearts to the screen. I'm going to call it um, OUI, okay? And this object is basically going to be responsible for drawing um, any UI elements, all right? So we'll have it draw like our pause screen, um, our, our like menu and stuff like that on the, um, the title screen when we get to that and so on. Okay, we're just going to cover all that in OUI. So I'm going to mark this as persistent. It's going to be another one of our manager objects. That's why I put it um, in here. I've just noticed S Health has gone into there. I'm still not entirely used to the new uh, uh, GameMaker 2.3 asset browser, so I sometimes forget to put things in the right place. S Health should obviously not be in our objects. <laughs> it should be uh, up with our sprites, so let's just move that over there. We should probably organize these sprites at some point too, but um, let's not worry about that for now. Anyway, yeah, so OUI is going to be a new manager object with our um, our O game and our O camera. We're going to mark it persistent, and then come back to uh, O game here. And you might remember where we did this, where we created uh, the camera object and tied it to a global. We're going to do the same thing with our UI. I actually can't remember um, if we end up using <laughs> these globals to actually reference these in any way, but I like to do it just in case so that any object um, at any time, if they do need to reference the, those specific instances, can actually refer to their instance IDs rather than just having to do, you know, with O camera or something like that. Um, so just to go over this line again, um, I just wrote here, uh, this was a global dot IUI equals instance create layer, um, zero, zero, doesn't matter where we put it, uh, doesn't matter what layer it goes on, OUI, okay, so we're just making that object um, at the start of our game. Now, this will fill up with more stuff um, as we develop this game further, but for now I'm just going to add the draw GUI event to OUI, and we're going to uh, describe this, first of all, as just drawing health, okay, so I'll call it draw health. Now, I've assigned those to globals, but rather than having to sort of grab the, the, the global um, data from them every frame. I'm going to bake them, bake those globals into local variables um, during this event. So I'm going to write var underscore player health equals global dot player health. In fact, let's maximize this and get rid of this. Semicolon uh, var underscore player health max equals global dot player health max. 
It's worth pointing out why I do this because, you know, you, you might think, well, why not just, you know, I've bothered putting these in the globals, why not just refer to them as globals? Um, generally, uh, it's good practice if you're going to have an event where you're going to refer to a global variable or even a, um, an instance scope variable, a blue variable, um, like a lot over the course of like uh, four loops or like um, or or any kind of loop or just just a lot in a sequence of code um, it's generally worth baking them down into a local scope um, var variable um, just makes it a little bit quicker to access it's a trivial optimization but it is one nonetheless all right next up I'm gonna write var underscore player health frac equals frac open bracket underscore player health uh, this, uh, the, the frac function, is going to return the fraction uh, from player health, meaning if player health equaled um, 0 0.7, or sorry, that's a bad example, if it equaled uh, 7.2, uh, this would return 0 0.2. If it, re it contained uh, 3.6, uh, this would return 0 0.6. Okay, so it's getting whatever's on the other side of the point, uh, okay, in the case of a, a real number. The reason we want this is we want to know um, how many full hearts to show and how many, like, uh, like what um, fraction of a heart to show when we sort of reach that amount of health. So say we have five hearts total and we should be showing 3.5. We need to know to show three full hearts and half of a heart, okay? And then this is going to help us, you know, determine how much of that last heart we want to draw. So then I'm going to do player health minus equal underscore player health frac. All right, so I'm going to take that um, our total health, which as I said could be something like 3.6 or 3.5, and if it was 3.5 then we know player health frac is going to equal 0 0.5, so we take 3.5, subtract 0 0.5, and that gives us 3. All right, so this is going to end up being an integer, uh, a whole number, right? It's going to be like 3 or 2 or 1, whatever, right? Um, so now in this variable we have the total number of full hearts we want to draw and in this variable we have the fraction of a heart we want to draw you might see where this is going in order to allow us to draw however many hearts we need to draw now what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop to draw our heart uh, sprite um, uh, several times in a row in the top left of the screen based on these two values okay so i'm going to write for open bracket var i equals one I less than or equal to player health max I plus plus close bracket and then we'll open a brace down here so we're gonna start from one and we're gonna count all the way up to our maximum health uh, drawing um, a health sprite because uh, no matter how much health we have we're always gonna to want to draw our maximum health worth of hearts to show what our maximum is right even if a bunch of those hearts are gonna be empty and then it's just a matter of for each heart determining which frame of that heart we want to show. Remember that the first frame is a full heart, the second frame is an empty heart, and then the rest of the frames are different fractions. All right. So with that in mind, I'm going to write var underscore image index. Okay, that's going to represent which frame we want to draw. Equals i greater than underscore player health. Now I don't know if we've done this before, but you may be wondering what I'm doing here because I've used the greater than symbol, which is normally something we would use in either a for declaration or an if statement or something like that, okay? If we want to say that if i is greater than player health. But when you use a symbol, it's just going to mean um, that it's going to take these values and it's going to return true or false, or in, in Game Maker it comes back as 1 or 0, and in a lot of programming languages it does the same thing. Okay, so this whole thing is going to come back as 1 or 0 based on this condition. So if i, uh, in this case 1 on the first loop, is greater than our uh, current player health. Now if you remember, our first frame, i.e. frame 0 of s health, is a full heart. Okay, so if i is not greater than our current player health, so i is 1 and our current health is 2, then this will return... Um, false okay which or zero and so we'll put zero in image index ready for that to be the frame we want to draw okay we want to draw frame zero i.e a full heart if i is two and player health is two then it's still not greater than player health so again it's going to return false or zero which will be a full heart if uh, i is three and we're drawing the third 
third uh, heart icon along the way. Um, and that's greater than our current amount of health. So we're on the third heart, and player health is two. Um, this will return true or one, which as you remember from my health, um, health icon is an empty heart, okay? So hopefully you're getting the idea of the logic here, where we're just determining the image index based on, you know, which heart we're drawing and uh, how much health we currently have. So now we know whether we should draw a full heart or an empty one, but what about when our health is 2.5 or something like that, right? Okay, um, when we get to um, the third heart along the way, we would be drawing an empty heart when actually we want to draw like half a heart. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write if i equals underscore player health plus one. All right. So in that example, our health is two and a half. So that would mean, if you remember, that player health equals two and player health frac equals 0 0.5. Um, when i equals player health, which would be two plus one, when i equals three, we're drawing that third heart. Um, we want to then decide, based on what player health frank is, uh, which of uh, the next few frames we should draw, okay? If uh, player health frank is zero, um, then we don't want to draw, uh, then image index is already correct, okay? We should draw the empty heart. But if it's um, over like a quarter or if it's over halfway, then we want to draw one of our, uh, our heart fragments instead. So we can simply write underscore image index plus equal player health frac greater than zero. All right, so if uh, player health frac is greater than zero, say it's 0 0.1 or whatever, then we're going to add one to our image index because we know we're going to at least want to draw the quarter heart, which would be frame two. All right, um, then I'm going to write image index plus equal uh, underscore player health frac greater than 0 0.25. So if we are, say, anywhere between 0 0.25 and 5, uh, then we're going to round up and assume we want to draw um, the halfway part in our health, uh, this frame, which was, would be frame 3, all right? You remember counting from 0, so 0, 1, 2, 3. And then, as you might imagine, we're going to write image index plus equal underscore player health frac greater than 0.5, all right? So if we're over 0.5, we assume we're going to draw um, the last frame, this one, all right? And then if it obviously if it gets all the way to um, uh, 1 and a full 1, it, we know it's going to draw a full heart already, okay? Because it'll already be correct from this. All right, um, so that means we've got in image index now the exact frame of S health that we want to draw, all right? Um, assuming that we're drawing each one uh, left to right, uh, one at a time. All right. So then all we need to do is write draw sprite. S health um, is the sprite we want to draw, and then we need to give it the image index, which is uh, underscore image index that we've just calculated. And then the x and y, just some magic numbers here. Really, all I'm going to do is eight. Uh, this is for the x coordinate. We're going to do eight pixels in from the left plus. Uh, open bracket, open bracket i minus 1 times 16. Because we're using the draw GUI event, uh, we don't have to worry about the camera position or anything like that. It's going to draw directly to the window, the game window, so we don't have to worry about, you know, whereabouts in a, a big room we are. We can just use uh, screen coordinates. So 8 pixels in from the left, we're going to take whichever heart we're drawing, um, minus one, so it's going to count up from naught to um, whatever our maximum health is, minus one, times 16, okay? So it'll be eight plus zero at first, because it'll be zero times 16, then it'll be eight plus 16, then eight plus 32, and so on, all right? So that eight is kind of like the margin, the eight pixels from the left where we're going to draw the first heart, then each heart after that is going to be 16 pixels apart, all right? For however many it is we actually want to draw. Uh, our y coordinate is simply going to be 8. <laughs> All right, um, a little bit more straightforward. Those are magic numbers. Maybe you want to put them somewhere in variables. It's up to you. I'm just keeping it simple. Um, so that's um, all there is to it, actually. We've already got um, our O game set up to make this object, so we can see just by running the game, we now have these three hearts drawing in the corner. If I go to O game and go back to the create, we can change our player health max to be like 5. 
and then we'll get five hearts drawing on the top left. Then I can also set player health to be um, three. Run that. We've got three hearts being drawn, and importantly, I can set it to be 3.25, for example. And we're drawing a three and a quarter, okay? Um, the, the rounding is a little bit weird, you might think, you know, why not just say uh, uh, if, if the player health rank equals um, 0, or 0 0.25, 0 0.5, or 0 0.75. Um, well, in theory, that's okay if you are only working, if you're, you're going to make sure that whenever you deal damage to the player, you only ever deal like 0 0.5 or 0 0.25 or however many fractions you split your heart into. Um, you can do it like that, but I've just added the flexibility here for us to be able to, if we want to, for whatever reason, um, subtract arbitrary real numbers. So we could even, you know, we can even set this to be like uh, 3.12 and it's going to round up to the nearest quarter, okay, based on the way we've done the math. The only way it doesn't round up is if you've got like, um, uh, say, 3.9 which obviously you would think rounding up would show four hearts, but it's going to show three quarters. I prefer it that way because I prefer to know that we've got, a, you know, we're, we're just under four rather than showing that as like looking like the four. Okay, I think that's personally clearer. You, but you can do that maths however you want. There's a million and one ways you could work out um, the fractions and draw them under slightly different conditions. I'll leave that one to you. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a long time since the last episode uh, with 2.3 now 2.3.1 out um we've got a lot of really cool changes that have come to game maker this is made things a little bit hard for me with the series in terms of you know like what do i do do i want to go back and redo loads of things and so on i've talked a little bit about this in the past but i'm still getting a lot of questions people being like is this the end of the series well hopefully as you know as you've seen we've just put out an episode so it's not the end but these episodes are going to come out slower because i want to focus on other things i want to make um, other tutorials, you know, I've been just just doing this series for such a long time. I wanted to do new things like the the new save and load tutorial, the transitions tutorial, those things. And there's still a lot of other cool stuff I want to do and explore um, with 2.3 because it's just opened up so many doors and opened up so many new things that I think people need to know about and learn how to use and. Uh, people need to move on to learning the new and better ways of doing things that we now have available to us. Lots and lots of reasons for me to do other things other than just carrying on this one series that's based in code that in a lot of ways is kind of obsolete. <laughs> so, and uh, the idea of going back and redoing the whole series or whatever to, to match it up does not appeal to me in the slightest, so I'm, I'm not going to be doing that. Um, so episodes are still going to come out. I'm, st I'm still committed to getting the series to a point that I'm happy to say it's finished. It's just going to be slower. All right. You're just going to have to wait uh, a, a bit longer for them to come out. All right. Anyway, thank you all very much for watching. Hope you enjoy this one. and I'll catch you all next time. A huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, as always. And a huge thanks in particular and in no particular order to the following. Elizabeth and Landon Brown, James Ballard, Gage Hunter, The Game Guru, Julian Cropley, Kadin Shino, Donald Braxton, Michael Kolich, Tim Tharman, John Kenai, Stephen Chenier, Borgia MK Ultra, It's Matt Poor, Hello Winter, Rachel Stewart, Arctix, Feral Princess, John C, Team D, Mr. Oz, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Phil Keen, Pong Pong Zhao, Andrew Gilbert, The Holtzman Effect, Kaiser Ho, Boris the Wizard, Zach Collett, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Yoram Pater, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Burgess, Samia Nyayalegaglo, Samia Nyayalegaglo, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Hare, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Daka Dondigo, Robert Churches, Baz the Dog, Scott Ewing, Max M, and Zephyr Flame. Thank you all ever so much, and thank you for watching and supporting what I do. Catch you all next time.